When I was a little boy, I wanted to be a hero. The truth is, when you get older, sometimes things don't always turn out the way you hoped they would. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Handle that business. Believe in yourself. Create your own destiny. Today we are focusing on our hip flexors, our glutes, our hamstrings. Have you ever, you know, just no matter what, your hamstrings are always tight no matter what. I've had that same problem too and I still somewhat do, but I know how to get rid of it. I know what I've done in the past to get rid of it. And it has nothing to do with stretching your hamstrings. Matter of fact, stretching your hamstrings would be the worst thing to do right now. If you have any type of anterior tilt, uh, posterior or anterior tilt in your pelvic, that's going to be the main reason of your hamstring being overstretched, right? So I have a uh, anterior pelvic tilt, right? So I have a big curve in my back. That curve in my back is what's causing my hamstrings to be tight no matter what type of stretches that I do. And eventually they feel weak and I'm not able to sprint correctly. Matter of fact, when I was in my uh, my game this past couple uh, weekends, my girlfriend looked at me running. She was like, yeah, I was moving, but it looked like I was gonna tear something. It looked uncomfortable. And when I look at myself running, uh, it's the same thing. It, it feels like I'm trying to overexert myself to really extend because my hamstrings are already overstretched and therefore I'm creating more tension in them, uh, stretching them out more as I try to get more speed and run. Now. I've been doing the correct thing, doing strength training for the hamstrings, and that's not the cause of them being tight. The cause is, once again, the anterior pelvic tilt that I have. So today, we're gonna to be going over exercises and what I'm gonna be doing to correct that, and you guys can correct it as well. Starting out, what we're doing right now on the hamstring curl machine, we're strengthening it, strengthening it, and um, what we're doing is trying to shorten that hamstring again. So usually when you, get on the hamstring curl machine, you don't really think about you know, your positioning or your pelvic is. You just kind of lay on it or uh, stand if this is standing one and you just kind of go for it, you know? You feel your hamstrings being worked. But what you need to do first when you get on the hamstring curl machine, especially if you have an anterior pelvic tilt, is you need to lie on it, right? And then tilt your pelvis the opposite way. So we're trying to straighten our back first, squeeze our glutes, straighten our back before we curl. Don't lie there. If you feel that you have a curve in your back when doing this, you need to stop because you're, you're only gonna further the, the problem. So what you need to do is squeeze the glutes, straighten up the back. Kind of What you're kind of doing is you got that curve, right? You got that curve and you're trying to get rid of it like that, right before you curl. So you have the curve and you, you lie on the uh, hamstring curl machine. You have the curl before you start, straighten that curl out you're kind of going to be like this, right? You're kind of going to be hunched over because you're trying to uh, compensate for that positioning. And then that's when you start to curl because you're trying to realign your pelvis. So doing this, we're going to do about five sets of uh, eight to 12 reps. want to go too heavy to the point to where you lose your positioning when doing the hamstring curls. This is a little bit, I'll say 10 pounds, a little bit too heavy right now for uh, reps of six. As I was trying to keep, right, I was trying to keep this positioning, then I kept going back down to this, right? So it's, it's this we want to stick to.
with squatting now it becomes a little bit more difficult because with squatting, what's gonna happen is after the years, you know, I've been lifting, what? I'm, 20, I'm about to be 29 in like four days. And I've been lifting for 14 some of my years. So, you know, I've developed a certain technique in my squat in order to maximize, uh, maximize the amount of weight I can press, you know, squat with a certain technique. And even though it's the incorrect way, you know, that's what I felt comfortable with putting up loads of amounts. But the thing about it is, is my squat is so hip dominant, right? That I lose the ability to feel growth and feel contraction in my, in my glutes. Usually it's just like my hips or my quads that I feel my squat in. I don't, I, I never feel my hamstrings or glutes really working. You know what I'm saying? So doing this, you have to correct those things. So you're now able to bring in those extra muscles to help you squat more. I could have been squatting more this whole time if I stayed with this type of uh, training consistently. The thing about it is it's, it's about ego because at this point, now I can't lift as much doing my correction exercises, right? So it's like, dang, I can barely do this with 145, 135 pounds, um, this type of squat, you know, for reps of six because we're trying to strengthen that area once again, about five, uh, five sets of six reps uh, with, you know, 100, I could probably do 225, um, but once again, it's the same thing as the hamstring curls. When you get in your position, you're probably gonna have to put your feet out wider, right? Right, because usually I have a closer stance. Now I have to put my feet out wider in order to get more depth. Still bringing that hip, this right here, boom, bringing that in, and that's how you're gonna squat. So when you do that, your, your glutes are gonna squeeze, and it's gonna be harder for you to really try to get that depth. So that's why you have to kind of compensate a little bit with a foot, foot distance. You guys are probably getting the gist of everything of how uh, this training is. And you have anterior pelvic tilt. Everything just needs to be over exaggerated, pushing that, that hip forward, right? Getting rid of that curve once again, flattening it out before you do any type of exercise. If you do an exercise with it like this, all you're doing is just getting more, more depth in that positioning. So you need to flatten it out and teach your body the correct positioning to be when doing these exercises. Now we're going to move on to the glute bridge which is one of the exercises that's gonna be crucial for your, your glute strength, right? Your mobility in the hips as well. Now, when you do this movement, you'll understand that if your dingling or pustating is the highest point of your glute bridge, then you have a problem. Because when you straighten out your back, when you straighten out that tilt, you're gonna know that your range of mo motion is gonna be shortened, right? It's gonna be shortened and you're probably gonna be, your thing should be probably like level-headed with, you know, your chin, right? So when I do it, you know, I'm coming up, pushing up, my glutes are at a huge, my glutes and hamstrings are at a huge contraction that I can't go any further. But if I, if I just like let it relax, I can just go all the way down and all the way up and we don't want that, right? Because we're compensating, that curve is compensating for that range of motion and we're forcing it rather than just staying in where we need to be, our plane of motion and sticking to the positioning that is correct to build the certain areas and to strengthen um, that uh, anterior, uh, I mean, uh, strengthen the glutes and um, correct that anterior pelvic tilt. up today we got one of these exercises that I almost do like at least three times a week uh, really work on those hip flexors uh, mobility and we're gonna make it a little bit harder just by once again flattening out that curve in the back standing pulling that pelvis in and then 
taking it step by step, step over um, the bar on the Smith machine. I put the bar at the lowest or at a height that I can get my feet over. And we're gonna do lateral step overs with that same positioning. And you're gonna feel, you're gonna feel how tight it is in the front, in the front of your, uh, your pelvis because of, of the tilt and how much it's having to work. So you're once again correcting these, um, correcting these areas that have been just constantly just pounded and pounded and pounded on with running, walking, sitting, uh, weightlifting in that positioning, and we'll have to recorrect ourselves. So these things are going to be hard even at a light amount of weight, you know, body weight. So we're going to do this for about I do 20 reps for four sets. Bit on. video that is all for now We've got about four exercises for you guys to help with fixing that anterior pelvic tilt and uh, I'll bring on another video and I'll focus more on the stretching and how to help with the stretching that because I know a lot of you are just continually stretching your hamstrings all the time and it just seems to not work your hamstrings are always tight no matter what and once again I know how that feels and here are things that I'm going to teach you on how to fix these uh, fix these problems that you have to make you a better athlete and to prevent you from injury. Uh, I should have paid more attention to it um, beforehand and that way I wouldn't have torn my hamstring because of that but it really it dawned on me once again once it happened that hey I need to get back on my routine because I did it before it worked perfectly everything was great and then I got careless over time and that's just something you have to continually work on after years of destroying yourself and being in the wrong patterns. Um, so Hope you liked this video once again. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also leave a comment, it really helps out the videos, helps my videos get out there more, uh, helps out the channel. Um, it's up to you guys to help me grow, you know? No matter you know, what, your video quality, it doesn't matter how good my video quality and everything is, it's up to you guys to help me grow. So don't forget, you know what I'm saying, if you support me, uh, please hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel and comment, and I'll catch you guys later.